Welcome back to another video from the Block IoT. As we mentioned in one of our previous videos, in December 2023, Siemens released a big upgrade to the logo. It's a smaller controller or micro PLC. We went through all the new upgrades and changes, so I'm not going to spend time in this video and explain them again. So please watch the other video, which I put the link somewhere up here, and then come back to this video. This video is very exciting because I've got my hand in one of the new logos. So I'm going to do an unboxing vaccine on logo version 8.4 and we are going to test the MQTT functionality we are going to write a program for this logo and connect it to our mosquito MQTT broker running our raspberry pi 5 and as i mentioned before logo is one of my favorite controllers because it's very compact and low cost yet it can do a lot of things so if you are just planning or designing your iot project this is something that i strongly recommend to look at so without further ado, let's jump into the next step, which I'm going to unbox this logo version 8.4. And then we are going to write a simple program in Logosoft Comfort version 8.4 to publish some data from the logo to Mosquito MQTT broker. And then we'll try to subscribe to some data which are available in our Mosquito MQTT broker to test the bidirectional communication over MQTT. All right, I'm very excited to unbox this new device because I haven't seen any other video about it and I'm just curious to see how the new logo version 8.4 looks like. So as you can see here, I have a logo uh, 1224 RCE. That means it has the relay output and it has the ethernet and also the real time clock. And as you can see on the box, uh, this new device needs Logosoft Comfort version 8.4 or the later one. And overall, I haven't noticed any change in the box compared to the previous video that we unboxed an older logo it looks exactly the same okay and then this is the part number for the device that i have 6ed10521md080pa2 okay let's just uh, open the box and see what's inside Okay, as I expected, yeah, nothing else in the box. So we get the logo itself and also a manual. And again, I'm not going through this manual again, similar to the other video. Uh, let's see if there is any additional information, but uh, not really, as you can see, different wiring diagrams and overall how to set the logo from the integrated display for the models that have the integrated display. I cannot recognize any new change. As you can see, we have the output on the bottom, the inputs on the top. Some of the inputs can be analog or digital for sure. And you have the arrows or keypad over here and OK and escape for going through the menu. And on the side, yeah, same device. Actually, I have an older device here next to me. So let's just compare it. So. On the right side, I have the logo 8.4 and on the left side, I have the older logo that I showed you the unboxing process in the previous videos. So as you can see, if you compare them side by side, everything looks the same. The ethernet ports, the output. From every side, you can just compare them. The only thing that I can notice, there is a slight color difference between the new one and the older one. I'm not sure if you can notice, but I expect the new one has a better quality LCD or display. So yes, that's it for the hardware and unboxing. Let's just uh, jump into the software, assign IP address to this, and we'll configure it to connect to our MQTT broker running on our Raspberry Pi. So here's what we are going to do. On the right side, I have the new logo 8.4. And on the left side, I just have an old demo. So as I mentioned before, connecting two or many more logos together over the network is very easy. So we are going to use the inputs and outputs of this logo demo units, and we will pass the data to our logo 8.4, and then we publish those data to MQTT broker, and we will see the result in real time. 
So just a quick note, both of these logos are connected to the same router that my Raspberry Pi is connected to because this device should be able to reach the MQTT broker which is a Mosquito MQTT broker in our example. So I'm just going to power this logo on and then we'll assign the IP address to both of them and then we'll start writing our program. Okay now both of the logos are powered up. So first thing first, press the escape button and you can navigate through the menu. Uh, we need to go to the network and then we just want to assign the IP address. As you can see, the default IP address is 192.168.0.3, but we want to change it to 192.168.0.41 because that's a free IP address in my router. And the subnet mask is okay, it's 255.255.255.0. And the gateway address is also correct in my case. So that's all the setting that you need to do on the logo side. You could apply this setting on from the software, but I personally prefer to do it on the hardware to make sure my software can see the hardware very quickly. So that's it for the new logo. I just pressed OK. And from the previous video, I know the IP address of this logo demo units, but just to confirm, we just go to the menu and we go to the network IP address. 192.168.0.40 the subnet mask and gateway also look okay so that's it from the hardware configuration let's just jump into the software and start writing our program to read the analog inputs from the old logo and then we transfer them over the network to the new logo version 8.4 and then we'll publish the values of these analog inputs to the MQTT broker Okay, here we have logged in into our programming machine or laptop and the first thing we have to check is whether our two logos and our Mosquito MQTT broker are reachable from this programming laptop. So let's just do a quick ping. Okay, the first logo is online. Let's do the ping for the second logo. This one is the logo 8.4, which is the new logo. And let's just do a ping for our Raspberry Pi 5, which is uh, also online. So we are all set and we can just open the logo version 8.4 and start the programming. As we saw in the previous video, there hasn't been much change in the user interface of the new version 8.4 of Logos of Comfort. So if you're familiar with the logo, you should be able to continue programming and configuring your logo similar to the previous version of the logo. So because this is a network project, I just switched to the network project and I'm going to add a new device. Let's just add our new logo, which is a 8.4. And uh, let's just enter the IP address of the new logo, which is 192.168.0.41 and hit OK. Now let's just add our second logo, which is sitting on the left side of the new logo. And it's just a logo demo unit. The IP address is 040. Here we have added both of our logos in the Logos of Comfort program and we are ready to start the programming. The process of configuration and programming for using MQTT in your project is fairly easy. After you add your hardware, you have the diagram editors open for both logos. You can just simply select the target logo, which is uh, in our case on the right side. And we go to the tools, transfer, and cloud setting. The first thing you wanna do, you have to go to the cloud connection setting. So as I mentioned in the previous video, in the new version of Logo, there is this new feature that you can scan for accessible logos and you can see more than one logo that is connected to your system. We have two logos connected to our programming laptop. That's why we have two logos listed as accessible devices over here. So I'm just selecting my logo version 8.4. Okay, the first thing you have to do, you have to just go to the register thing and as we explained before, in this new version of the logo, you have the option of connecting to AWS, Azure, Alibaba, or just a flat MQTT protocol. In our case, because we want to connect to Mosquito MQTT Broker, or maybe Hive MQ MQTT Broker, or any other MQTT Broker, you just select the last option, which is MQTT and hit the next. And here on the next step, you have to specify the MQTT broker URL, port number, and any username and password or credential that you might have set up on your broker side. So in my case, I have 192.168.0.104. 
and the default port for MQTT brokers are 1883. I don't have any username and password, but we always have to assign an MQTT client ID, and in my case, I just define logo 84. The next, and on the next window, you have to define the MQTT authentication info. As you can see, you can have different authentication methods. For example, you can have two-way TLS, one-way TLS, or even without authentication. But in our case, because we don't want to deal with a certificate and TLS certificates, we just select the TCP and hit the next. On this window, you have to define two different topics name for the topic that you want to publish the data to and for the topic that you want to subscribe to. So here, I just call them logo pop and logo sub. And of course, you can just define your publish QoS and subscribe QoS as well. We just leave it as default, which is QoS zero. Hit the next. And as you can see, my logo has been successfully registered. Now I am connected to my MQTT broker and I can just close this window by hitting OK. So after defining our connection between our logo and cloud instance or a local MQTT broker, which, which is the case in our example, we have to define the data transfer area that we want to transfer between MQTT broker and our device. So we just go to the tools, transfer, cloud setting, and cloud data transfer setting. Select the logo from the list if you have more than one logos. Just hit OK. And in this window, you need to define which memory areas you want to use for communication between the MQD broker and your device. Or in other words, you want to define which the memory area you want to subscribe to or which memory area you want to be published to the MQTD broker. So in my case, I'm using two analog inputs. I will publish these values to the MQTD broker and also I will use two other memory areas, which is VM1 and VM2, which are basically two words in the V memory of my logo. And as you can see, you have a choice to select the periods that you want to send the data, if you want to be frequency, or you can just define them unchanged. And after you define your memory areas, you just hit the right to logo. So at this point, we are done with the configuration and all we need to do, we just want to ingest some data to those memory areas so we can see the result in the MQTT broker. So we're just going to drag one, two analog inputs, AI1 and AI2, and then we are going to use two analog flags. And then we'll connect this analog input one to AM1 or analog flag number one, and analog input two to analog flag number two. And as the last step, we need to do a download to each of the logos. Now we can just monitor the values online with our logo 8.4. And as you can see on the lower left side, my two analog inputs values are their minimum value, which is two. And if I just change the value, you will see the results. And I believe the values are defined to be between two and 1000. I just give some random values to get us started. But if everything has been configured properly, uh, now we can just go to MQTD broker and see the values are publishing to the MQTD broker. Now I'm using the MQTD Explorer to see what is going on inside my Mosquito MQTD broker running on my Raspberry Pi 5. As you can see, I have a topic called logo pop, and that's a topic that we configured during the configuration of the connection setting. So as you can see here, I have four variables that I define in the data transfer areas, AI1, AI2, VM1, and VM2. So if I change the value of analog input one and two, you will see the result on the MQTD broker. So as you can see here, I'm changing the analog input one and I'm just put it in the maximum, which is 1000. And as you can see on here, the value is changing. So I just decrease the value again. And as you can see, it works as it should. Uh, let's just do it another quick test on the analog input number two. I put it in the maximum, which is 1000. And then I'll decrease it again. 
or you can look into the payloads of the MQTT topics that is being published from the logo. And as you can see here, we have some metadata, uh, such as a short description and the name of the variable and of course the values. So as we can see, the publish is working as it should and we have all the values in the MQTT broker. So now let's see how the topic subscription works on the logo side. That means if we change some value on the MQTD broker, we want to see the changes in our logo. The subscription was a little bit confusing for me when I was first starting to test it. But to summarize, the way it works when you're publishing some value in the subscription topic, you have to include all the elements that you have in the published topic. In other words, you have to include the AI1, AI2, VM1, and VM2 in our example. So in our case, VM1 and VM2, they both have the values of zeros and let's just change them. Let's just put perhaps two and four. Let's just publish. And as you can see, the values for VM1 and VM2 are updated. And at the same time, I can change the analog values and as you can see, the AI1 value is changing and similarly AI2, but they will not have any effect on the VM1 and VM2. So we can verify the values in the logo side by going back to the logo of Comfort software. So if I just open the data table, just typed in the memory areas that I want to monitor on the data table. So as you can see at the moment, we have the values of two and four. And if we just go back to our MQTT Explorer to change the values, and let's just change the values to perhaps 6 and 27. As you can see, the values are coming to our logo. And as you can see, the subscription also works as it should. And we can achieve the bidirectional MQTT communication between our logo and any MQTT broker. So as I mentioned, you can use the same configuration and steps to connect your logo to other MQTT brokers such as HiveMQ MQTT broker or any other MQTT broker that you use in your project. So at this point, we can end this video and I hope this video was useful for you. If you have any question, please reach out. And as always, please consider subscribing to the Block IoT YouTube channel if you found this video useful and your support helps us to keep going and create more videos for you. Until the next time, have a great day or night.